We would love to bring you another teaching segment on this invitation. John 5 and 28, he said, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Those things that we put Jesus aside for won't look like nothing compared to eternity. We just need to hear the call of God today, the invitation. In Luke 14, again in verse 25, and, and there went out a great multitude with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come unto me and hate not his father, mother, and wife, and children, and brother, and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Our life was a life of sin. That's what we should hate is the sin. Not the individual, but the sin, because the sin is what caused the graveyard. The sin is what caused the gray hair. Sin is what causes sickness. Those things that's so hard for us to maybe to bear at times. Sin caused that. Why would you want to serve? I heard a man of God say one time, you have a choice to serve two men, knowing that one at the end of the day, would kill you, wouldn't spare your life. That would be your reward, is, is dead. The other one would give you life and a payment of eternity. That's what sin is. Sin, when it's finished, has used you up. There's nothing left. But Jesus, when it's finished, it brings life and burst out into life. Amen. There's a life to be had in Jesus Christ, folks. We don't need to hate individuals. We were all, Paul said, we've all sinned, past tense, and come short of the glory of God. You're not going to find a church at Church of God of Union Assembly in North Wilkesboro that's going to hate you. We'll preach against sin, but we're not going to hate the individual. We'll preach against sin, we won't preach against just the individual. The sin that's in us was wrong. That's what Jesus was talking about in 14. If you hate not your wife, your brother, your children, yea, in your own life also. Cannot be my disciple. Our life, my friend, is, is, was a life of sin. In the 27th verse, And whosoever doeth bear his cross, doeth not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. That is the reason a lot of people, they won't bear their cross today. They won't, will they? Another, and, and Matthew 8 and 21 and 22, And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father, but Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. You might think, well, that's harsh. No, Jesus was emphasizing the seriousness of following him. He was telling him, you need to come and go with me. Amen? That's what he was telling him here. In Revelations 19, in verse 7, reading down, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife had made herself ready. God's house will be filled one day. Don't you want to be a part of that? In verse 8, And to her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. The righteousness. The only way to get these good works is for them to be preached to you. The righteousness of saints. And he saith unto him, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. There's a call going out today. That's why we're sending this invitation. It's a call. He said unto him, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. For his wife had made herself ready in one place, didn't it? In Revelations 22 and 16, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel, testifying to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. What are you talking about, his angel? Let's look at that for a minute. I'm going to find you a place here. Bear with me. I'll let you know what the angel is. A lot of people, when they think of an angel, you'll see figurines in some people's homes, and it's an angel with wings. I believe in celestial angels. I believe in terrestrial angels, but I believe that the, there's an angel that God has sent, and we'll find this here. He, he talked about his angels in one place. Let me find it here. It's in Hebrews 1 and 7. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his minister of flame of fire. What did he say here? 
I, Jesus, have sent my angel in Revelations 22 and 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star, and the spirit and the bride say come. That's the church. The spirit and the bride say come. Let him that heareth say come. Jesus never said go to a child of God. He said come, didn't he? Let him that is a thirst come. Whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. It won't cost you anything to go to God's house. He said, let him take the water of life freely. Listen to that. Let him take of the water of life freely. Let's look at John. Let's look about this water. What do you mean the water of life? John 7 and 37. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which that believed on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. See, there's a greater walk today. You can get the Spirit of Christ, but then there's the Holy Ghost. It wasn't given until Jesus was glorified. Are you hungry and thirsty? Won't you come to Jesus? Yeah, this means something really to give your heart to him. This woman there at the well we spoke about earlier, last segment. I'd like to go into that a little bit about this water. This water of life really. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me a drink. We know the, the story there in the Bible. It was the truth that happened. We know what happened there when Jesus there set thus on the well, didn't he? And he asked for a drink of water from this woman. He said, if you knew who asked you to give me a drink, thou wouldst ask of him, and he would give thee living water. The woman saith unto him, sir, give me this water I thirst, that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Think about that. Let's, let's, read, let's read a little bit more in depth on that John 4. Nothing give you peace outside the gospel of Jesus Christ. John 4. When therefore, John 4 and 1, and therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus had made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not his disciples, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. He must need to go through Samaria. This woman needed to touch from the Lord. Look how that reads. He must need to go through Samaria. I believe that the Lord would send an angel to me if I needed. He has so many times. But he said he must needs go through Samaria, then come with thee to a city of Samaria, which is called Sachar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey. He was a little tired. He sat thus on the well. He was a natural man at this time. If you really look at the The steps him and Paul took, they walked. They walked more than most people drove in their life to get to people. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being worried with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, unto her, give me a drink. Excuse me. For his disciples... We're going away into the city to buy meat. Then saith, saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest ask the drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it was, who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, 
Thou would have asked of thou wouldest asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. A woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep, for whence then hast this thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, drank thereof himself, and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water, this natural water woman, what he is saying, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I gave give him, whosoever drinketh the water I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in a well of, shall be a well of water springing up into him everlasting life, into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water. I thirst not, neither cometh here to, hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband, and come hither. The woman saith unto her, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and whom thou hast now is not thy husband. Now is not thy husband. And that saidest thou truly. Jesus just wants an honest heart. That's all he's asking for. And this woman, if you read on down, and I encourage you to, she forgot that water pot, the natural water. She dropped her water pot and she went to town to tell the good news. Come and meet a man who told me all I've ever done. See, Jesus will deliver you. He told her all she'd done, but he delivered her. There was a joy there. Do you think that woman was mad? No, she was happy that there was a truth that had come to her. She was happy that, hey, come and meet a man that told me all I've ever done. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 57, it shall come to pass as they went in the way, a certain man said to him, Lord, I will follow thee wheresoever I goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, the birds of the hours have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. Are we willing to go with Jesus? I'm telling you, Jesus will provide your needs. But there's some suffering. And this is where people back up. There's a little bit of, there's, there is some suffering that goes with following Christ. I heard a great man of God say, and it very stuck very hard with me. Jimmy Pratt preached a sermon. And he said, you know, really the crown's won. You know, you heard a lot through your life that you win a crown of life. You know, the things that we pick up in this world, yes, it is suffering to lay those things down. But the crown is won when you go through the persecution. And you will, folks. I've had some good friends that wouldn't talk to me no more because I walked a different life. I don't think it's so much they hated me as they just couldn't stand that I was going to go with the Lord and that was not what they wanted to do at the time. There'll be some persecution. There'll be some talks in the corner maybe about you. People will separate from your company. But if we take it well, if you're persecuted for his sake and take it well, that's where the crown of life's won. In Acts 2 and 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, This is the same folks that killed the Lord, that cried, Crucify him. Think about that, folks. Jews and the Gentiles both were brought into that category because the Jews said kill him. They, they delivered him to be crucified. The Romans done the deed, didn't they? The Gentiles, they were the ones that actually crucified him. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. There's hope for these folks. They just hadn't needed to hear the gospel. They could read it. See the importance of this man called Peter? Now when they heard this, they heard the gospel. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What do you want to do? He, he told them, and they said, What should we do? He told them to repent 
and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the man that you give over to the be killed, you're going to have to repent and be, then he said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. We know what remission is. When someone is naturally ill, and if they have reached a threshold, they put them in remission. That disease is no longer there. There's a chance that it might return, but they're in remission at this point. Don't believe, I don't believe in once saved, always saved. I believe, he said, for the remission of sins. You have to onward go to Jesus. You can't just accept Jesus Christ. That's all that's, there is to it. You have to hear the word of God. You have to apply the word of God. For the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as our Lord, our God, shall call. There used to be a spirit on some that are going to listen to this that used to be upon you. That If it's not there, you can get it again. Some may have never been able to feel it, but I'm telling you, you can feel it at the house of God. You can feel it where there's unity. Praise the Lord. I hope what we said be a blessing. We've got one more teaching segment on this, and we'll finish up the invitation. And I hope this has been a blessing. Remember, one more time, we'll go through this one more time on the invitation, just a few more places left. Please visit us at the Church of God of the Union Assembly at, North Wilkes, at Wilkesboro, North Carolina, uh, 1099 Windsor Street, Wilkesboro. You can reach us on our website at wilkescoga.com and get directions to our, where our sanctuary is. But we would love to have you. And uh, please visit that website for up-to-date posts on what's going on. And uh, we would love to have you. May God bless you as our prayer. Hope you have a great day.